the your abuser um, or your rapist um, and you'd like to discuss about the reporting of of what the rapist did to you and so on so where would you like to start with that um it i can start off where where it what led up to me going to the police and saying something um because the reason why i did it wasn't about him or it didn't start off about him um it was at that time in therapy where um therapy was coming to an end but i was at that stage where i was accepting what had happened to me and um seeing this how important it was and mm. that kind of thing um and understanding that um people who who behave like that might um do it to many people and so i think it were there were a couple of synchronistic events which all happened at the right at, at the same time which m m made me um do that so i was i was accepting the severity of it um and i also got the impression um that i wasn't the only one um and then i can remember watching um a tv program and i um it was about somebody who'd abused some young people and they'd gone to the police and the police officer said if it wasn't for those young people having the bravery to come forward this person could have gone on and and done it to many people so i interpreted that as well i haven't told anybody i must be horrible and if other people have got hurt that's my fault because i should have said something so i felt a huge amount of guilt and my therapy did stop so i was on on my own with all this i didn't have really i felt quite overwhelmed and out of my depth thinking all these things because i didn't have anybody to like talk things over um what about your level of importance when you said um that it was a synchronistic event at the right time and then you kind of moved over that one and the other one that you said the importance of of that what what he'd done but not actually the importance of you no and, that and one in that one yeah. in the equation and even now how you're speaking yeah no it's that like, in the equation yeah, so it's not what he did to you it's what yeah. what he might do to others yeah or what he like. might have could have done to other people and if i'd have said something when i was little i could have prevented that and it was and so it was my fault and and all those kind of things was it all your fault at the time i felt it was yeah, i that's felt it i felt like really saying. overwhelmed with it and really not knowing what to do and i can remember when because i again it was at the time it was when i'd finished long term psychotherapy so i found not having that support when i'd had it there before really quite distressing and i was struggling with the only one person in my life who had taken myself ser who had taken me seriously and had built up a certain level of trust with was gone and i felt really overwhelmed and didn't know what to do and felt very guilty and to blame for if anybody had got hurt um and my ocds and my um routines and everything they were they'd gone really um quite extreme and become all or nothing i can remember it was one morning I, at that time i had a routine where i had to get up at a certain time and walk for like 20 miles every morning before um doing anything i'd had a binge the night before a huge mega binge on food um so i felt ill that morning i felt sick i was tired because i'd been up all night feeling ill it was six o'clock in the morning i had to be out of the house by five and twenty past six i don't know why but my head said you've got to be out you've got to start walking by then it was pouring down with rain it was cold i felt ill i was walking the poor dog in all of that 
and I just felt so ill and it was going around in my head how bad I was, how bad I was and the only thing I could think of to actually rectify it, how bad I was, sort of like to make up if I could, was I just went home, got ch- after my walk, I was doing my walk, went home, got changed and then went down to the police station and said I need to talk to somebody. I had, So it wasn't planned, I didn't have any thing what I was saying, it was just that re- everything built up and I thought, I'm going to either kill myself because I can't bear this, that I'm endangered or hurt other people. Um, again, that seeing that documentary about what that police officer said, saying if it wasn't for those young people having the guts to, and bravery to come forward and all that round in my head and I knew I couldn't bear any, couldn't bear having that guilt and that responsibility on me. So I felt like I either kill myself or I've got to go to the police and tell them did you interpret that as, as the police officer said, if it wasn't for them being brave enough to come forward, that it dismisses them? Because if it wasn't for them coming forward, they would have done this to others. Did you interpret that of the others being more important than them? Yeah, I, I, I took it as in that, not necessarily that, but the risk. The responsibility was on the people to speak up, not the the perpetrator. Not the perpetrator. And so I felt yeah. an enormous amount of guilt and responsibility. Because as well, it's it's the what goes on in the ethos, what you might have heard of. Why are you less than? Why are you to blame? What you know when things have things have been said as as you've as you've gone along, and and one of the um, reasons maybe you know I'm kind of guessing really um I remember when you were speaking about the church and and how they blame the female mm-hmm. and so quite often some people can blame children mm. and it's like you know well it was the child's fault mm. like how can it be a child's fault when a grown adult chooses to rape them mm. that is not the child's fault I didn't and sort of feel it was my fault that that had happened and I didn't in watching that documentary I didn't feel that they were blaming those young people what I felt they were saying it was the the young people's responsibility to speak out. That's it, but it's not just that, you know, speaking about the documentary, it's speaking about what's being said to you and mm. in well, your words. I, and, I and thought my, my self-esteem was non-existent. I, I didn't matter at all. My mm. um, and, and, and at that time, when I was thinking about all these things, I've always felt a bad person from from being very little and um, being told I am and stuff and how I'd adopted that as my identity, hearing those things, it just added another dimension. Yeah, I know I'm bad, but now I'm to blame if other people got hurt. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying is that, is that how you interpreted? Yeah. Interpreted that because, you know, what, you know, some people have in the ethos where or well, it, they were asking for it, all the things, mm. and you've got to ask yourself, what kind of person says that? Mm. What kind of person stands up for a child rapist? Mm. What kind of person, you know, would say something like that? That that person has a responsibility, mm. yeah, and took their responsibility and decided to to rape a child. Mm. So it's like looking at that is mm. there. Is there something in society that misses, rather than leaving that responsibility to a child, solely to a child, doesn't everybody else have a responsibility as well? Mm. Do the adults around them not have a responsibility mm. to be protecting a child? Mm. To, there would have been signs that you were, not, you were unhappy. Did anybody ask you? Were there anyone that you could go to for, mm. to support? Like you say, when you were at school, you were barely noticed. You know, somebody didn't even know that you were there, that you were that quiet. Shouldn't we be looking out for things like that? Mm. Mm. You know, in the in the first place. Mm. So, but instead, what's happened is that you, as the victim, took on the responsibility of number one, feeling that like, like nothing, and of course you would after mm. somebody's violated and raped your body, um, in in that way. But also. Um, you know, there's no one for you to go to, no one's really noticing you, 
the world because you're not complying in the cult, in the culture. Um, you're bad, you're this, you're mm. this, you're this. Um, so no one's asking you who you are, but everybody's telling you. Mm. Uh, and that's outside of, of everything else that you were mm. going through. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, so then you go to the police to report it because um, now you're feeling really responsible for others. Mm. So now you're taking on the rest mm. of the responsibility mm. for, for everybody else because that's more important than And I was are. really clear with the police. Well, when, when, I, when I, I got to speak to somebody because it was quite... Obviously, like, it, it was like quite spontaneous that I was there. And I was like, I need to speak to somebody. And she's like, what about? I'm like, I don't know. Um, children might be at risk. And she's like, well, is it yours? Or I'm like, I don't know. I don't know who they are. I don't know if they are. I just need to... Um, like like that and it were and it were like I made it very clear when I did speak to somebody I'm not here for me I'm not here for what happened to me I don't want that being investigated I don't it's not an issue because I, I of it, going back to what you said I didn't feel that I was worth anything it was I was more bothered about just I want you to know his name just in case somebody else has got hurt or somebody else says and it wasn't about me I was like really quite clear. I don't want to go any further with, and I was a bit unhappy with how they they're not able to just do what I want to ask them to do and say I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to tell him. I don't want you to approach him. I just want it written down somewhere, and I found it really difficult that they had to have an agenda um, and couldn't just do what I told, what I asked them to do. So I didn't sort of, um, I didn't sort of trust um, so it was taken the interaction, out the re inter yeah. interaction was with he, them. Was there an element of fear of him knowing that he... Oh God, yeah, that's why I didn't want yeah. them to approach him because um, he knew where I lived and, and and all those kind of things. When I'd been to the police and she said, we can't guarantee that we won't speak to him. And I thought, well, if I am the only one who's gonna know who it is, um, knows where I live and, did it and all that kind of stuff, I went home and barricaded myself in the house and sat in the cupboard, pushed up behind the door, locked the door, wouldn't yeah. answer the phone. Very much back to what I was like when I was but you know that you're not the only one. Mm. And I guess as, uh, as well, the paradox in that is when you were in hospital, um, you didn't want to speak about it. So the treatment that you received for your eating disorder didn't, as you said, didn't address the reason why you've got an eating disorder. No. But I didn't know that, that, I didn't know that was linked to anything. What had happened when I was little, I put to one side because I had enough trouble just getting through each and every day because I was such this horrible person and I feared everything and was frightened, wouldn't, didn't want to go to school, didn't want to be around people, those kind of things, and thought I was so bad and horrible. I didn't have time or didn't have the space to deal with what happened when I was little because it was enough tr tr trouble for me just getting through the day. And when I started having treatment from... Um, the depression and the eating disorder and everything that it was all um, focusing on the food so I didn't have the opportunity we're all doing food diaries getting weird refed you know what you should be eating why are you eating it da, 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 and on those kind of things so the, there wasn't space that's what I'm to saying to look at to look the, well let's talk about why you like this or it was just exactly it was just so it's that collusion yeah. with that as, In, as in well. my notes, it's got no self-esteem, no self-esteem, no self-worth. It wasn't questioning why mm. I'd got no self-worth and no self-esteem. It was just all in there. But I guess for you that was a collusion because you didn't, like you said, you didn't have space for that, mm. but that was causing, yeah. causing that. And so then you go to the police and the police have space for this. They're saying, actually, this is an important thing and then that triggered your fear of, yeah. of yeah. you know... Because I just thought, in my imagination, 
that go around to this person's house, say, this person has made this allegation, which they used, which I didn't like, and there you go, and then I just, what do you say? That person will say, well, it's a load of lies. We'll go, oh, all right then. And then that person will come round to me and say, why are you saying these lies? So as soon as I went to the police, I was that fearful. I went home, barricaded myself in the house, chairs behind the door and everything like that. Wouldn't answer the phone and went and sat in the cupboard <laughs> because I was just so frightened that they were going to come and tell me off or have a go at me that I'd made these lies up about them and that kind of thing. Um, Did you think it was funny though? No. Sounds quite scary for you. Mm. Mm. That you're just going to be called a liar, nobody's going to believe you or, or anything. And, mm. and the word allegation, mm. which can, you know, for some is an awful word because it means that you're alleging it. Yeah. But you're not. Yeah. The, 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 when, when, the, when the term allegation was used to describe what I was saying, I lost. I lost my the level of trust that I had, which wasn't very much. It just went because I thought basically you're saying I'm a liar. I didn't have I, they didn't have to say oh I believe what you say if they could have just said what so what you're saying is well, what that would have been truth, not that's it all you yeah. have to say is what your truth is yeah what you've your just said is, that is this has happened yeah as simple as that but that's using it. the word allegation they could use it to him but to use it to what I'm saying I found that it's like. You're saying I'm a liar. Yeah. So I yeah. might as well just forget about it now. Mm. So it's like, you know, he's innocent until proven guilty. So but, we're going to tell yeah. you that you're a, a liar. liar. Until I've got to and, prove myself and innocent. Until, yeah. Well, prove myself that I'm telling the truth. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, 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 I... Why do you have to prove yourself, really? Your, bo your body is the evidence of, you know, the operation that you've had is usually because mm. somebody's been raped and the damage that's been done to you and the way that you're reacting and things like that I mean you know why would that have to be proved to you because I always think that I think I always think that I'm being dramatic and making a mountain out of a molehill I believe you, and I don't think you're being dramatic. I know, and I and I know what happened, and I know when I describe or say what happened, there is no way. To, there's no other description for for it, mm. and I know it happens, and I know, but. I'm always, I'm all, always have been affected by those around me, what they say and what they, and I would, I would really struggle if what I, what I say happened was challenged or I don't like being different I think because I've learned for so long to people please and stuff like that actually saying something different to what other people are I'm, even though I want to I'm just not that confident I guess because you know what happened to you was to please someone else mm. it was to please your rapist mm. And your opinion didn't matter. Mm. Your thoughts didn't matter. Your emotions, your feelings, your body, nothing about you mattered. Mm. It was all about them wanting to excite themselves. And they just used you to do... I'm, I always feel that I'm in the wrong. If something happens or if something goes wrong, even if some two people are arguing in the street, I always think well, it's something to do with me, what I've done wrong, what I'm... Oh, and I'm, I, I'm that focused on that I'm a problem, that I think the pro all the problems are... I'm automatically done something wrong. Like even, you know, I, I guess a lot of people people might say if they're driving and there's a police car behind them 
you know, it's like, what have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? You know, that's a genuine thing for me and a genuine fear that I've done How something wrong. How would you know wrong. what's right or wrong, though, if you've been, you've come into a world that's wrong, or, you know, a world where the way that people behave and the things that we're programmed with and the things that we believe and everybody's told who they are, they're not asked who they are and this is how the world works here mm. and the world the way the world works is often wrong mm. um, we're often told the wrong things so how are you going to know what's what's right and wrong and, and, and so for you you know your reactions to your normal reaction to something abnormal something barbaric and you know vile that was happening to you your reaction to that was told that you were wrong yeah you're wrong because you're bad or you're a bad and there's you know there's something wrong with you you've got no feelings you're this you're this you're constantly being told who you are mm. but never asked mm. never asked is there anything happening here that doesn't feel right to you is there anything happening that's disturbing to you how often do people get asked that in my case, never. So you interpret as that you've come onto this planet and there's something you're wrong, wrong with me. There's something wrong with you, rather than there's something wrong going on in this planet with the human race. Mm. Yeah. So, what does it feel like to not be challenged, Debbie? What does it feel like that I believe you? scary and also um, very doubtful that I don't think it now but when we first started um, seeing each other I felt that one session I'd come and you'd go I've just been thinking about what you said and I think I've changed my mind I don't think it is that anymore I think you are being a bit dramatic or you know, we are making it into something that really it's it's not. And, and all those, I was very much on edge that you were just going to change your mind or rethink or... And I think I think that might be partly because I wish you would. <laughs> I wish yeah. you'd say, well, actually, these things haven't happened to you because I can't process it. I wish I could say that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that's, I guess that's sometimes what, it, it is a, a contradictory because, you know, when you say it, it is, imp it is important and it is this, that and other, it's like, you understand what I'm telling you, you understand how, how awful I feel each day and how the impact it has on me. So in some ways I've, I value your honesty and how you you you, you say stuff to me because it, it reminds me and stops me just being in my head of me being silly and this that and other but there is an element who that I, I want somebody to say actually we've all changed his mind it wasn't that bad or it wasn't that or it didn't happen or something like that there's still a, a, a part of me that wants well, I, that I only to wish happen that, I only wish that I could say it didn't happen because it hadn't. I wish that it hadn't happened to you. But I, unfortunately, I believe it did. Mm. So. And I know it did, but I d it's, be yeah. because if I if because I'm so used to and I've lived for forty odd years of listening to everybody else and not myself. If you turn round and said, "No, it didn't," be like, "Oh, oh, great! I'll stick with that one, regardless of what everybody else has said." Is what if you listening to just what you want to hear in it? It is, but what if you don't fight against that anymore and you accept that it did happen? And then once we accept something, you know, when you reveal it, and you say, okay, I'm not going to... If I don't accept it, it's like putting something under a rug. That's not there. Let's put the muck under the rug. It's not really there. Instead of, well, if we look at the muck, then we can, we can accept mm -hmm. it and clean it out. I think there is still a big element in those people around me about not saying stuff, not being honest, 
not bringing it to light and um, in one way it's I don't know I think it's because it is serious but it can be in as that it's I don't know it's not I don't know what I'm trying to say. I've still got. I'm still in an environment where, although it is taken seriously, it's not talked about, and it's the um, the vibe that I get is it's ruined your life so far. Don't let it ruin anymore. So there you go, um, and that's. I can't just flick a switch and everything be all right. Um, but um, there was a situation recently, um, and I've talked about it in, in other videos, and we've talked about it at length, that I don't like being touched. Um, and recently my mum was with a group of people um, and somebody was going and just tapped me on the shoulder and I just went, oh, you've touched me. And um, mum said, she don't like being touched, she don't like being touched, she won't even hug me, she won't even hug me. And I didn't say anything. And when we'd, we'd gone away, I said to mum, I said, um, there's gonna be some point if you say stuff like that in front of people, I'm going to blurt out. Yes, and the reason why I don't like being touched is because I was sexually abused as a child. I said, there is gonna be some, some Sometime I'm sure that I'm just going to, she went, all oh, right, I won't mention it again then. Because she doesn't want me to say it in front of people. She doesn't want... The truth be heard. Yeah, do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? And it I was, guess it was, well, oh, I'm not going to say it then because I don't want the risk of you actually saying people and people knowing. Yeah. But she's not made me feel ashamed or anything like that. But it's stuff like that how I interpret it. I guess as well, you know, oh, she, it, it speaks volumes when a parent says, oh, she won't even let me touch her, as if that takes it towards them, mm. you know, because, you know, she should let me touch her, mm. instead of looking at the importance anyway of why won't she? No, my, mum, my mum's a very huggy person and really struggles that um, I don't spontaneously give her a hug or, you know, when you see somebody or when you leave or if it's somebody's birth or something or to comfort somebody when, you, when, when they're not well. Um, my mum really takes that personally. Um, and when she does, she goes, when, when she asks for a hug, it's like, I can't. And so she went, well, I'll hug you then. And I stand there like a plank of wood while she hugs me. But that's her need. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's giving up, you know, yourself to, to fulfil somebody else's need again, rather mm. than that person understanding mm. that it's very important for you not to be, mm. not to be touched because of what's happened to you. Mm. And so we can, we can all want a hug. It doesn't mean that we get one, does it? You, so it's looking at it from from someone else's perspective or then there's two people with needs are we here to fulfill somebody else's need not really unless we're a parent we're not here to fulfill somebody else's need and your needs weren't fulfilled yeah. growing up yeah so this there's, there's still even though it's acknowledged around me it's still not talked about or um, I don't expect people to talk about it all the time I don't want to talk about it all the time but I'm still getting the messages that there's some, something wrong with me um, and that's what I said, I said to my mum, I said, if you keep going on about that in front of people, I will say why. She's like, oh, well, I won't, won't mention it again then. I guess, you you know, somebody might already know why. Mm. What you'd think. Mm. If someone said, I don't like being touched, and you heard that, 
your, your faults might be one. There's a big reason behind it. Exactly. Because that's one of the basic human instincts of life mm. is that as a way of comfort or expression of emotion or whatever, it's about being touched. Yes. So, you know, when you say that, well, I won't mention it again because I don't want it to be talked about. It doesn't mean it's not thought about. Mm. It's just because we don't mm. have conversations about it. And there's different conversations that we have. We can talk about it in a constructive way or we can talk about it in a way where we're just rehashing it, mm. so, which is a constructive. It just means that we're stuck in the past mm. instead of being able to say that past impacts here, but I'm working on letting it go mm. and doing something. Mm. But it proves difficult because quite often when you're in the past with people in the past, Mm. that can kind of hanky you back a little bit as well I know one thing that um, I say I don't like being touched by other people and I will do anything to avoid it mm. but because of my level of or lack of confidence and my not wanting to seem awkward or whatever, there has been convers um not conversations, there has been situations where I've let somebody hug me or I've shaken somebody's hand or something like that because I just ha the pleasing people side of me has come out and it's like I'm a rabbit caught in a headline, I've got I've got to do this because it's expected and they'll think I'm weird if I'm not and I've got to do it and I've got and I've got to fit in and those kind of things. So I will I will behave how I think I should behave when it's actually really, really difficult inside. Um, so it comes back to that fawning um, and masking kind of behaviour um, that I'll put on mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. It was really interesting. I, I think, I guess it's with different people as well. I, 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 had, I had to go somewhere a few weeks ago and the person was really, I was meeting them and they were really open. They were like, are you a hugger or a handshaker? And I just went, neither, hello. And and that were it. And, but that is the first time ever in my life I've actually, and it would accepted. Um, but that is the first time ever I've actually felt able to say what was right for me. Mm. And why was you felt able? Um, I don't know. Well, it looks like because you were asked. Yeah. But it's, yeah. But was it because you were given permission? Yeah, and I felt that it'd be accepted, which whatever I said, mm. um, and that it won't be. that I'm weird or that I'm odd or that I'm rude because I don't want to shake somebody's hand or whatever, that kind of thing. I, I, I get, I felt that it wouldn't be used against me. I guess that's, you know, the, the, that's what one of the problems is, isn't it? That you feel weird or odd if you don't do the same as everybody else is doing. Mm. But is what everybody else is doing so good? Is it so healthy? Is it, so it's like, would you want to anyway? What's wrong with just being who you are? There's nothing wrong with being who you are. The problem is, for the society, is being who you're not. Mm. That's the struggle. Mm. Because you, your body lets you know that it's a struggle. Mm. Your mind lets you know that it's a struggle. Mm. It's, it, this isn't right, doesn't feel right, doesn't fit right. This is a lot of pressure for me to keep up. This is. This feels like this. It's like... Why do it then? Mm. And just do you do you who you are? And I don't really know who I am because I'm so influenced by what happened and the fear that I have of people and how I need to protect myself 
and keep myself not necessarily safe because I know what I do isn't safe you know I know the harm that I put my body through and my mind through is not safe it's about I wouldn't even say comfortable it's more tolerable um, it's the better option um, to what? But you have a chattering voice an egoic voice that chatters to you like everybody else constantly tells you about you is it talking to you? Is it telling you about you? No, it's what it's recorded. It's what it's recorded what other people have told you about you because, you know, like I always say, if you only know two add two, that's all you're going to teach your child. Mm. So you're teaching your child whatever you do. Mm. And I don't know where they've got that from. Where have they got that from? They've got it from you. Mm. So it's that, that, you know, so... And that's what's being recorded in your mm. head. And apart so, from that negative chattering voice the one that hurts me but I think it's to protect me mm. the one that says do all this stuff and the world's a ho horrible place and stuff I don't know what it's like to be without that well it is trying to protect you but it's it's not doing it in the right way because it doesn't know what the right way is it mm. only knows the way that it's mm. been shown mm. and so or how you interpret it so that's why you know somebody did something dangerous to you and so you're being a danger to yourself mm. because you were shown mm. and so that's what we do and so you're trying to manage on what what information you've gathered on this planet about what's right and what's wrong and what's safe and what's dangerous and you've got all this information playing out over and over and over again mm. um, because that's the information that you picked up mm. so and then when you look at it, it's like you, you're trying to be normal in an abnormal situation. Mm. So you're trying your best. You know, that's how, what the majority of people are doing. They're trying the best to be normal in an abnormal situation, um, not realising that is what I'm doing, is that right for me? Mm. Is, it, is it right? Is what we're learning on this planet right? Does it look right? Well, what I've learned <laughs> certainly isn't mm. healthy or right yeah you don't see nature doing it no you just see human beings doing it so if you look at nature and you say does nature do any of this stuff does do you see birds with an eating disorder I guess that's all you can look at, as I say, the one that created the apple. Yeah, we're so clever, I don't know any human being that can do that. So, until I meet one that can create an apple, then you can't really look to them. Mm. Look to us as a species, if we're getting it wrong. 